The UI Split View Controller class is a container view controller that manages the presentation of two side-by-side -side view controllers. You can use this class to implement a master detail interface in which the left side of the view controller presents a list of items and the right side presents details of the selected items. Split view controllers are for use exclusively on iPad devices. Xcode provides an excellent master detail project template. We'll name it, make sure it's selected for iPad, and set a top-level directory. You can see that Xcode has created app delegate files, a main storyboard, and a master and detail custom view controller classes. The storyboard scenes for iPad can be quite large and not fit completely on the screen. You can zoom in and out by clicking on the magnifying glasses at the bottom. However, in order to work within the scene, you have to be at the full size. If we look at what the template has provided for us, we see a visualization of the split view controller. We see a navigation controller that contains the master view controller and another navigation controller that contains the detail view controller. Inside the app delegate, you can see that we get a reference to the split view controller through the Windows root view controller. From there, we will get the split view controller view controller's last object, which will be the navigation controller that contains the detail view controller. Finally, we'll set the split view controller's delegate to be the navigation controller's top view controller, which is the detail view controller. Moving on to the master view controller, we see that it has a single property called detail view controller. This will allow us to keep a reference and pass messages to the detail view controller. We can see that the Xcode template has created a master view controller has implemented a UI table view that has a fairly complete implementation, including adding NS data objects to the model and editing the table. The detail view controller contains two properties, a detail item, which is updated from the master view controller, and a detail description label, which is a UI label that is updated with the detail items value. Inside the detail view controller's implementation file, we find a class extension which provides a property to the UI popover controller that is managed by the split view controller. We also find a private method called configure view. Next, the properties are synthesized, and we see here a method called set detail item. This is a custom setter that overrides the standard setter that is created when the property is synthesized. Inside, we check to see if the detail item has changed, and if so, we call the method configure view to update this detail description labels text. If the master popover controller is showing, then we dismiss the popover. Further down, we find two methods that are called by the split view controller delegate. The first method, split view controller will hide view controller, is called when the iPad is rotated from horizontal to portrait and the master view controller needs to hide. The second, split view controller will show view controller, is called when the iPad rotates from portrait to landscape and the master view controller now appears. Let's go ahead and build it. You can change the size of the simulator to fit inside your window by changing the scale. We see we rotate it into landscape mode. We hit the plus button, which adds NS date objects to our model, which fills the table. You see we click on it, it updates the UI label inside the detail view controller. And in portrait mode, we can get the master view controller to appear in the popover by hitting the master button. The table is pretty well featured and includes functions for editing the table. Back in the master view controller, we want to change our data model. Instead of NS date objects, we're going to have a NS mutable array of NS strings that are URLs to common websites. We can go ahead and comment out the UI bar button item add button because we won't be using it anymore. We can do the same with the insert new object method. Build it again and we can see that our master detail view controller has the URLs listed in the table. Next, we're going to add a new file to create an Objective-C protocol called master detail delegate. There will be a little more sophisticated way of passing messages between the master and the detail view controllers. We are going to declare a method called master action parameter sender that our detail view controller will implement. In our master view controller, we're going to import our master detail view controller header and we're going to set a new delegate property. Back in the master view controller, we're going to synthesize the delegate property. 
In view did unload, we'll set the delegate to nil so we don't leave any dangling pointers. In the detail view controller, we need to import the master detail delegate file and declare that the controller will conform to the master detail delegate protocol. Now we'll implement our delegate method, master action sender. In this case, we'll just simply ns log out the object that was passed. We have to remember to set the delegate that will be receiving the messages, in this case, the detail view controller. Back in our master view controller, we have to remember to pass the message master action to the delegate when the user taps on a row. Now we see that when we tap on the table cell that we're calling the method master action through the delegate. Now we're going to change some of the properties on the UI label detail label and in our delegate method we're going to call the set detail item method directly. This will set the label's text property using our delegate method. Here we can see the label updating when we tap on the row. Let's extend the functionality of this app by adding the UI web view. Now, it's when we tap on the cell, the web view will update with the URL that is passed to the detail view controller. Let's open up our assistant editor and try to make the connection between our UI web view and the header file. Remember that the scene in storyboard must be at full size in order to make your connection. Now we have a property called web view, so we'll open our detail view controller go down to our master action method the master view controller is sending the URL as a string we're going to need to create an NS URL using that string next we're going to send the message load request to our web view using the NS URL request with our URL the UI web view has a delegate property that needs to be set go back to the connection inspector and make sure that the delegate property is set to the UI Web Views view controller. Now when we build it, we can see when we click on the table cells that the UI Web View is loaded up with the URLs. One thing you might notice is the web pages aren't rendering very well. We can go back and adjust a property in the UI web view called scaling that will allow the web view to scale the page at full size. There are many more properties and protocols in using UI web views, but for now we have a fully featured app using a UI split view controller that loads a list of URLs in the master view controller and displays the accompanying web page in the detail view controller.